boys and girls, my name is Ashley Gardner and I'm the Director of Children's Ministries at MLEPC. So glad that you are joining us today for Children's Church. So we have been going over the past couple weeks, we've been doing stories about the life of Jesus. We first started with the story of John the Baptist. If you remember, he was our guy that was uh, a little bit different. <laughs> he was clothed in camel's hair. He ate locusts that were dipped in honey for food. Blech. We talked about if you would eat a bug or not. I know I wouldn't, um, but maybe you would like some honey dipped bugs. And we talked about how the most important thing about John wasn't the fact that he wore weird stuff and ate weird stuff. It was the fact that he had a really important job. He was in charge, God had sent him to baptize people, to get people ready for Jesus. And we talked about how one day as he was baptizing people, that Jesus came to be baptized. That Jesus himself got in the water and had John baptize him. John at first wasn't sure about this. He said, who am I to baptize you? He said he wasn't worthy, but Jesus said it was what God planned. And we talked about how after he was baptized, that the dove, the Holy Spirit, it looked like a dove, landed on Jesus. And remember, God's voice was booming from heaven and said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. After that, we learned about how the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert and how he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. Satan tried to get him to disobey God, to turn away, but Jesus knew he couldn't do that. He listened to God and resisted. He stopped Satan from doing that. He then went and called his followers. He called 12 people to be his disciples and they left everything to come and follow Jesus. Last week, we learned about Jesus's first miracle. If you were watching, you saw how I did my best to show you the miracle by turning water into wine. For me, it was using red food coloring to turn water into red water. Uh, but what Jesus did was so much more special. Remember, he was at a wedding that after three days they had run out of wine and we talked about how during Bible times that would have been a really big deal and Mary let Jesus know at first Jesus said it's not my time but he ended up telling the servants to fill those six huge jugs with water we showed you guys how much water that would be and we talked about how the servants took the water to the master of the banquet and when the master of the banquet tasted it it wasn't water anymore Jesus had turned it to wine. It was his first miracle. And we talked about who noticed this miracle, who actually saw it. It wasn't the bride, it wasn't the groom, it wasn't the master of the banquet, it wasn't the guests. None of them knew what had happened, but it was the disciples, the servants, and Mary. And it was that day that the disciples started putting their faith in Jesus. They saw God's power. Well, today we're gonna do another story where we see God's power so strongly at work. We told this story a few months ago, and this story is one of my absolute favorites. When I was a kid, this is the one that when my mom tucked me in at night and we did a bedtime story, I wanted to read this story every single night. It was by far my favorite Bible story. Do you guys have a favorite? Do you have one you like to hear all the time? Well, mine was when Jesus brought a little girl back to life. I just loved thinking that no matter what happened, I served a God that was even bigger than death itself. And that a girl that was around my age that had died, that he brought her back. So we're gonna read this story. If you would like to follow along with us, I would love that. We're gonna be reading it out of my favorite kid's Bible, the Jesus Storybook Bible. If you would like one, I can come and bring it to you guys. I can drop it off at your house. Send me an email. My email address is right here, agardner at mlepc.org. And I would love for you guys to be reading it on on your own with your families and to be following along. So today's story is on, if you're reading in your Bibles, it's page 214 and it is called A Little Girl and a Poor Frail Lady. There was once a little girl who didn't get out of bed one morning or the next or the next. 
In fact, she didn't get out of bed for a whole month. She was very sick and no one knew how to make her better. Jairus was her daddy and he loved her. One day, he was sitting by her bed, holding her hand, wishing there was something he could do. I know, he said. He jumped to his feet, put on his coat, kissed his daughter, ran down the step, step, steps, past the servants, out of the house, through the gates, along the road, into the town, up the step, step, steps, and into the temple. He fought his way through all the people until at last he found who he was looking for. Who did Jairus go to see? Who was he getting so excited that he had to sprint and get away from his sick daughter because this might be what's going to save her? If you guess Jesus, you are right. He knew that Jesus, even though the doctors couldn't help her, even though nothing they had tried was making her better, he had heard of Jesus' power and he was hoping beyond all hope that Jesus could do something to change what was going on. Jesus, he said, falling at Jesus' feet. My daughter, he pleaded, please. But he didn't need to beg because before he'd even finished speaking, Jesus reached out his hand and helped him up. I'll come at once, Jesus said. Jairus' eyes filled with tears. Jesus was coming. It would be all right. In those days, of course, they didn't have ambulances, so they had to go by foot. Jesus' helpers knew that he would heal the sick girl, but they must hurry. If Jesus didn't get there soon, it would be too late. So think of what a rush they must have been in. I know for my children, every morning we are rushing to get out the door for school. It seems that no matter how hard we try, we're always still late. And I am telling them, hurry, 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 we're gonna be late, get your clothes on, get out the door, and we are literally sprinting out the door. Think of what a rush they must have felt that they were in, what a hurry they must have been in, knowing that this girl's life was on the line. It wasn't just being late to school, it was that this girl was about to die. And they had to get there before that happened. So we're gonna see what happens next. But everyone was in the way, hustling and bustling, jostling and pressing, pushing and shoving, squishing and squashing. The disciples ran ahead, forcing back the crowd. Suddenly, Jesus stopped. His friends looked back. What was he doing? Who touched me? Jesus asked, because he felt power go out of him. Me, said a frail lady looking down at the ground because she was ashamed. The poor lady had been sick for 12 years and she had to get well. She knew if she only could touch Jesus' coat, she would be healed. So she touched his coat and instantly she was well. We don't have time, Jesus' friend said, but Jesus always had time. He reached out his hands and gently lifted her head. He looked into her eyes and smiled. You believed, he said, wiping a tear from her eye, and now you are well. Just then, Jairus' servant rushed up to Jairus. It's too late, he said breathlessly. Your daughter is dead. Jesus turned to Jairus. It's not too late. Trust me. At Jairus' house, everyone was crying. Jesus said, I'm going to wake her up. Everyone laughed at him because they knew she was dead. And she was. She wasn't asleep. She had actually died. Was it too late? Can Jesus do anything about that? Is Jesus bigger than death itself? His disciples and the family were about to find out. Jesus walked into the little girl's bedroom and there lying in the corner in the shadows was the still little figure. Jesus sat on the bed and took her pale hand. Honey, he said, it's time to get up. And he reached down into death and gently brought the little girl back to life. The little girl woke up, rubbed her eyes as if she'd just had a good night's sleep and leapt out of bed. 
Jesus threw open the shutters and sunlight flooded the dark room. Hungry, Jesus asked. She nodded. Jesus called to her family. Bring this little girl some breakfast. Jesus helped and healed many people like this. He made the blind see. He made deaf people hear. He made lame people walk. Jesus was making the sad things come untrue. He was mending God's broken world. I cannot tell you how much I love this story. Even hearing it now, like I said, I loved it as a little kid. I wanted to hear it all the time. But even hearing now, I love it just as much, if not even more. To know that we have a God that is bigger not only than illness, but even death itself. And not only is Jesus bigger than death itself, Jesus loves and cares for us, and he has time for us. Jesus could have so easily, when that woman touched his robe, Jesus could have yelled at her. He could have said, who do you think you are reaching out and trying to steal my power? Or he could have said, you're making me unclean, you're dirty, stay away from me. Or Jesus could have just said, you know what, I'm in a hurry, I'll come back later. But Jesus stopped and he talked and healed the woman. Jesus always has time for us. No matter what's going on, God is never too busy. There is nothing in your life that is too big or too small for God. No matter, even though God is handling the entire pandemic, even though there's wars going on across the world, even though there's stuff that seems to be falling apart that we think that God is probably busy taking care of and maybe we're not important enough for God. God loves you and hears every single one of your prayers and cares for you, just like he cared for that little girl and just like he cared for that woman. You are not unnoticed by God. You are not unimportant. You are so loved. You are so treasured. And God has time for you. He's waiting to hear from you. And God has the power to make a difference in our lives. God doesn't just want to be the miracle worker in our lives. God wants to be our best friend. He wants to be our father. He wants to be the one that we turn to when anything is going wrong or when things are going good, that he can hear about our days. But we also need to realize Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus does have power. And the power that he displayed most for us and made the biggest difference was the fact that he died on the cross. Jesus gave his life for us. For anything wrong that we have done in our lives, the punishment for that was supposed to be death. That was what was coming for us. That death that the girl died, it was supposed to be death forever. It was supposed to be separation from God. But what Jesus did was he died in our place. Instead of us being on the cross, instead of us being separated from God, it was Jesus. And now, because Jesus did that, if we believe in him, we're forgiven. We're seen as clean, as healed. And then, because of that, we no longer have to fear death. Because when we die, and we know that there's a lot of people around us that have died. When you look at COVID, there's a lot of people that have died from that. But if we believe in Jesus, we don't have to fear death because we know that when we die, we're not separated from God. It's not really death. It's going to heaven to be with him, to be healed, to be free from pain, free from crying. It's going into God's world. We could never do that before Jesus died on the cross. It was death was the end. It was the end of the story. But with what Jesus did on the cross, he was making things new. He was taking us as his children. And so now, if we believe in him, we have nothing to fear. So he showed us through the little girl that he had the power to do that. And now, through what he did on the cross, we can trust what's gonna happen to us. We need to believe in God. We need to believe in his power and know how much God loves you, that he has time for you. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to get him to know him better by spending time in his word, by reading the Bible and by praying to him. So I hope this week, talk to your heavenly father. Let him know what's going on. Let him know about your day, about things that upset you. Just get to know him. Spend some time praying to him. He wants to know you and he wants to show himself to you. So 
I hope you guys liked this today. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see you and talk to you again. Have a wonderful day and God bless. Thanks. Bye.